Good morning. Please pardon my look here. Let's see. This thing doesn't seem to be going. We're going to hit the manual start button. There we go. I believe we should be going now. Let me know as you're coming on if you can see me. Can you see me? Can you hear me? This is Dr. Annette, and we're talking about, we're doing poop talk today from Situate, Massachusetts. Um, I came here with my pink business partners to visit a lab that we do business with, and we have had the most amazing trip. And part of that trip, we took some time to go to um, downtown and visit some buildings and such, you know, some, we did a little sightseeing, I guess is what you would call it. And we walked into this little coffee shop, which is the picture that I had posted on the, the cover of this video, was at a little coffee shop that was tiny, like tiny on the inside. There was maybe room for eight people to sit. It was so super cool. Um, but I used the restroom while I was there. And in the restroom, I noticed that the door, when it was closed, didn't match up to the floor. There was like a gap of like this big in one place and like this big in another place. And I thought, wow, look at that. Like that door is, the floor is obviously not level. Or maybe the door was not exactly level. Um, but I thought it was like really kind of a cool thinking process at the moment because nothing in our lives is perfect, right? And nothing is perfect all the time. So I, um, I remodeled my house a couple years ago and I kept telling my husband, well, this isn't straight and that needs to be this way. And you know, I was always trying to make everything perfect and <clears throat> it just got to me thinking about people's health and how we're always trying to make everything perfect. And even sometimes people won't get started. Like people won't even start on their health journey until the perfect situation. Like they're going to start exercising next week or they're going to start eating better once their job changes or, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to start um, avoiding gluten once their kids go back to school or, you know, there's always a reason, right? some sort of excuse for why you're not doing what you're doing. You're waiting for things to be perfect before you begin. And what I'm here to tell you is these buildings that are here. Hi, Adam. Thank you for telling me that. Hi, Joan. Um, what these buildings that have been here since the 1700s, some of them even in the 1600s, these buildings have been here all of this time and they're not perfect. There's nothing perfect about them. You know, they were built by people that didn't have fancy tools. They were built by hand. People had to chop logs and put them together and build a house out of them. They're not perfectly square. If they would have waited until they had the right tools or if they would have waited until they had the right help or if they would have waited until then guess what nothing would have ever gotten done but instead they just did what they had to do and they accepted the fact that this log that's going to build this wall is not as big as the log that's going to be built with this wall and we're just going to make the best of it and guess what? These buildings are still standing. They're still withstanding the storm. They're still able to handle what Mother Nature throws at them, right? So the point I have is, are you waiting until the perfect situation comes around for you to start doing what's best for you? Or are you starting now and doing a little bit every day to make your life better? Are you doing a little bit every day to improve the quality of the food you eat? Are you doing a little bit every day to get a little bit more exercise? Or are you waiting 
for your situation to be perfect in order to begin. And if you are, you need to stop that. Hi, Connie. You need to stop waiting and just get started. Waiting is not going to help you get where you need to go. And like, look at this. I mean, we're getting ready to go on a boat today. I don't have on any makeup. I'm like a mess. But I figure we're going to be out on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Why do I need to put on a whole bunch of makeup and fix all fancy hair? Because it's just going to be all windblown and smeared off anyway. As a matter of fact, I'll probably get to wash off what I do have on so it doesn't smear even more. But, um, you know, I've got crazy bed hair. And I'm on a video right now talking to you guys on Facebook where the whole world can see me because honestly, it just wasn't worth it to go do all of the things to make myself look like what everybody else thinks you're supposed to look like. This is the real me. This is raw me. This is what my husband gets to see when I wake up in the morning, poor fella. Um, but are you making everything perfect before you start doing the things that you're supposed to do? Are you trying to make sure that the building is square, the roof is perfectly level. Are you trying to figure all of those things out before you start making strides towards having a better life or building a better lifestyle or creating a better diet? And I know a lot of people say, well, I can't eat keto because I have children or I can't eat keto because I have a husband who won't eat keto. Guess what? You don't even have to tell them that they're eating any kind of special diet. Just make the food that fits your lifestyle and they will eat it. If they want to add a piece of bread to their dinner, they can add a piece of bread to their dinner, but you don't have to eat the bread. You don't have to have the gluten or the carbs or any of those things. If you make healthy keto-like meals, which to me, I prefer low carb, not keto, but if you make low carb meals and make delicious food and feed it to your family, you don't have to tell them that they're eating keto or Mediterranean or paleo. They won't know if you don't tell them. Just make them healthy meals and let them eat them. Don't worry about all of the details. Don't worry about every little thing. Things don't have to be perfect before you get started. So, you know, and by the way, just so you guys know, my shirt says, don't go bacon my heart. <laughs> um, I know you can only say don't go bacon, but I wanted to get the whole shirt in there. I'm assuming you could see it. Don't go bacon my heart. Um, that's my shirt. My sleep shirt. Excuse me, my sleep shirt. So, um, but I just thought that, you know, looking at that building and seeing how imperfect it was, but how perfect it was working for that little coffee shop and how nobody here cares if a building is a little bit crooked. But in the Midwest, where I'm from, everybody's always trying to make things like perfectly square and perfectly beautiful and perfectly this and perfectly that. But here in the Boston, Massachusetts area, where everybody lives in a house that's probably pretty old in some buddy's idea, right? There's so many houses here that are old and they're not necessarily square. They're not necessarily perfect. I saw houses yesterday that were literally built into rocks, like the rock was part of the foundation. The rock was part of the house because if you're going to build a house there and there's a gigantic rock that can't be moved, you either don't build a house or you find a way to build the rock into the house to make it part of the house. So are you doing that in your life? Are you avoiding doing something because there's a rock where you want to build and you're afraid that you can't do anything with that space because the rock is there? What if you just embrace the rock and build your house anyway? What if you embrace the challenges that are in your life and then you do what you have to do anyway? How would that affect you? How would that affect the course of your life? And would it make it possible for you to be 1% better today and 1% better tomorrow? What can you do in the course of today to accept the challenges that you have in front of you and go ahead and do the things anyway. Go ahead and be as 
much of yourself as you can possibly be today. Even if there is a rock in your path, even if your house isn't perfectly square, even if your floor slopes to the left and every time you drop something, it rolls to the other side of the room, what can you do to adapt to that situation? Can you modify your lifestyle enough with the people that are in your life to go ahead and achieve your goals without derailing someone else? Can you start your low carb lifestyle and start doing what's healthy for you, even though your family isn't necessarily on board. And in all honesty, if you made a really good dinner that was very low carb, would they even realize that they were following your lifestyle? I think people get a little too tied up in the details. They get a little too worried about making everything perfect and they get some sort of paralyzation and it keeps them from moving forward because they're paralyzed. They're like, well, I don't have all of the perfect things, so I can't get started. But that's not true. And that's one of the reasons why I love my special unicorn drink, because it helps you, even if things aren't perfect, it helps you get a little closer to your goals. It helps you be a little better at what you're doing. It helps you be a little less hungry so you can make better food choices. It helps your body understand how to burn a little extra fat. It helps your mood be better so that when somebody says, I'm not going to eat that, you can be like, okay, well, maybe you'll eat this. It helps you be able to get through the things in your day that you might struggle with in other, on other days without this little helper, my little magic helper. So that's really all I had to say today. I just thought it was super cool that a building that was just not quite perfect, that was functioning so well, and people were happy to be there, happy to utilize that building. Everything was going so well in this little building that wasn't perfect. And it made me think about how imperfect we are and how we worry too much about being perfect so we don't get started. We don't do the things. So like today, if you're trying to get more exercise in your day and you don't have time to go for a 30 minute walk, so you're just not going to do it. Well, do you have time to do a 10 or 15 minute walk? I mean, seriously, if you can't do 30, can you do 10 or 15? Can you squeeze it in? Can you make it work? And that's all it's about. It's about making sure that that rock that's in your path doesn't keep you from getting to your goals. And if you have to build your foundation on top of that rock, if you have to build your house around that rock, if you have to make that rock part of your day, can you accept the situation that you're in and still be 1% better today? Can you still step one step closer to your goal. Can you get one step closer? And don't use the things that are in your way as an excuse. Use them as a way to um, be proud of yourself. Use them as a way to help you reach your goals and just accept the fact that it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. And here's the kicker. Your idea of perfect is not going to be the same of someone else's idea of perfect. So just like that building, when that coffee shop decided to use that building for their coffee shop, do you think they were concerned about how level the floor was or how well the bathroom door sealed? They weren't worried about that. They were worried about the location, if people were gonna be able to see them, if people were gonna stop there, if it was gonna be quaint enough for people to wanna come in and sit down and drink a cup of coffee. That's what they were worried about. They didn't care if the bathroom door didn't shut exactly perfect, and you shouldn't either. So stop waiting for things to be perfect and just get started. So that's our poop talk for today. Thank you for watching. I know I've been a little gone. I was actually really ill earlier this week and I just haven't been feeling that great. So I think today I finally feel kind of more like myself. So hopefully we're going to have some fun. We're going to take a boat out into the Atlantic Ocean up near Boston. We're probably, I think we're going to go see Cape Cod. I'm kind of excited about that. I've always wanted to go there. So 
um, new things are happening, new exciting things, but um, I'll be back in Missouri on Monday, so who knows what we'll talk about then, but I just wanted to come on and talk about that level of perfection that we all expect from ourselves, and hopefully this was helpful for you, and if it was, please make sure excuse me, to invite a friend to watch this video with you. Make sure you go and um, like and follow my page, Be Better, and be sure, hi Teresa, and be sure to come follow me on my, my regular pages, Annette Copeland Stevenson. I didn't even tag myself in this video, which I should do, but um, come follow, come be a part of the thing, and um, if you want to be a part of my keto group, just hop on over to Keto Lifestyle with Ask Dr. Annette and join the keto group. We have tons of great information in there. A lot of really amazing people helping each other eat a low-carb lifestyle and just making each other's lives better, sharing recipes and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So y'all have a great Friday and an amazing weekend. Bye-bye.